everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out my channel. Now for today's video, I wanted to go over what in my opinion are the 10 best iconic weapons that got added in Cyberpunk 2077's Phantom Liberty expansion. Now there are 33 iconic weapons in Phantom Liberty, all of which can be pretty good depending on your build, but these 10 iconic weapons are so much better than the rest that I figured they deserve their own video. Now these 10 weapons are so good that it honestly doesn't really matter what your build is or what skills you have assigned. But if you were to dedicate your build around these weapons, then I guarantee you'll be blowing through the very hard difficulty like it's nothing. So every one of these weapons on this list are great options, but I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best based on how easily I was able to clear out a large group of enemies. So in this video, I did a ton of testing for each of the weapons. I reset my perks and I made a build based entirely around the weapon and I tested them all at the same locations and I was playing on the hardest difficulty. So I tried to keep things as fair as possible. So with that said, let's get on to number 10. So for number 10, I have the brand new order shotgun. Now you can get this shotgun at the new black market merchant that you can see as soon as you enter Dogtown for the very first time. And his iconic perk reads, charging this weapon above 66% vaporizes enemies in your path, leaving an EMP trail behind it. Only for the brave of heart, and Steel of Nerves. It has a 50% headshot damage multiplier, a 100% armor penetration, and can shoot up to 14 projectiles. This shotgun has insane base damage without charging it, but if you were to charge it all the way, there are very few enemies that won't be instantly killed. Even the bigger mini boss type enemies with skulls above their heads can only survive two to three fully charged shots. This shotgun is an absolute beast and it hits like a truck, but I'm putting it at number 10 because of the insanely slow reload speed after each shot that combined with the three second charge time can make it a bit timely to clear out large groups of enemies all right so coming in at number nine is the hawk assault rifle that belonged to the madam president after you help the president escape and you progress far enough through the main story once the president leaves head back to the abandoned apartment building you were hiding in and you'll find that she left you her hawk rifle now what makes this rifle so good is his iconic perk and it states that headshots temporarily weaken and mark enemies. In this weakened state, enemies move slower, cannot use abilities, deal less damage, and are more prone to losing their balance. It also has really good balance stats across the board and has some pretty good bonuses. So to showcase just how powerful this weapon is, let's use this mini boss for an example. If I try to shoot it with any random weapon, they're going to go full on alter instinct and dodge everything I throw at them. But if I use the new Hawk rifle, if you can manage to land a headshot, it will completely shut down the mini boss and they can no longer dodge and are pretty much locked in place. Thus letting you pick away at their health while being completely defenseless. So this has been my go-to cyber psycho killer weapon for this entire DLC, but unfortunately when it comes to larger groups of enemies, it struggles a little bit due to its low magazine size and constantly having to reload. So in summary, it's good against 1v1s against bosses, but it's not so good against groups of smaller enemies. So up next at number eight, it's the NDI Osprey Sniper. This fires a powerful series of explosive rounds and headshots increase damage from hip firing, neutralizing multiple enemies increases the reload speed and has a chance to apply burning. It also has a 200% headshot damage bonus and 50% armor penetration. And you get this weapon just by playing through the main story and you'll eventually come to the mission birds with broken wings. Now here, Alex will be giving you the rundown of the next mission. And if you look over onto the counter, you will find this sniper rifle. And this sniper is pretty powerful, especially when you have all of these sniper related skills. This thing can kill an enemy in a single burst and sometimes even some of the larger enemies in as little as two bursts. I think this weapon is a ton of fun. The only downside is that since it's a burst weapon when you zoom in, it will absolutely burn through your ammo and the long reload time sucks when enemies are trying to rush you. But as long as you have a fast backup weapon to switch to, you should be fine. So up next at number seven, it's another sniper rifle called the Resetsu. You get this sniper by also just playing through the main story missions and you find it in the mission called You Know My Name. Now it's iconic perk says that charged rounds now penetrate through enemies and will bend their trajectory to hit multiple enemies simultaneously. And since this is a tech sniper, it benefits from both the sniper perks and the tech related perks. So it'll have a fast charge time. And if you hit the sweet spot while you're charging it, it'll send out an extra bolt that'll do additional damage. Now there's actually another new iconic sniper called Spark and it will send out electricity to nearby enemies and can hit multiple enemies at the same time. But I found that the Resetsu's charged rounds 
do a ton of more damage and it tends to hit more additional targets. This sniper can potentially take out two or three enemies in a single shot and with its 300% headshot damage multiplier, there are almost no enemies that can survive a headshot from this weapon making it one of my favorite snipers in the entire game and one that you're definitely going to want to make a build around because it's a ton of fun. So coming in at number six is one of my new favorite revolvers, the Mancinella. It reads that headshots have a chance to apply poison. After entering combat, your stealth damage bonus remains momentarily active. So what this translate to is pretty much just insta-killing anything that you headshot. Now this revolver doesn't have a silencer, but you're going to want to treat it as if it does. I literally just crouch around taking out the enemies one by one before they even realize that I'm there. This revolver is basically a mini sniper rifle and has a pretty fast reload time, so clearing out enemies is a bit of a breeze. And if for some reason the first shot doesn't kill them, the additional poison damage that procs quite often will probably finish them off. Now you find this weapon by playing through the main story. Once Kurt Hansen is dealt with, you'll get a call from Mr. Hands for a new mission, and here he'll give you this new amazing weapon. So up next at number five is another new revolver called the Old Reliable. Now you get this weapon from an optional choice at the end of one of the new side missions called Shot by Both Sides. And at the end of the mission, you'll have the choice of if you want to save the woman, kill the man, or kill them both. Now, if you kill the man, he'll drop the old reliable, and if you kill the woman, she'll drop the Risk It Power Pistol. Now, the description says that swapping to this weapon greatly increases headshot damage and effective range. The farther the target, the greater the headshot crit chance, and let me tell you, the headshot damage is no joke. This revolver is also basically a sniper rifle. I make sure to constantly stow away this weapon and switch back to it so that it always procs that extra damage perk and it absolutely destroys everything it hits in the head. So this has to be one of the most satisfying new guns in the game because just the sound alone that it makes every time you get a headshot is super addicting. The only downside that this weapon has is the super slow reload speed because it's a revolver, but the damage is so crazy high that I'm able to look past it. So coming in at number four, is the Agao Axe. And normally I'm not really into throwing weapons because I just hate the fact that if you miss, you're kind of screwed for a couple seconds while you wait for it to cool down. But with this ax, I'm willing to make the exception. This ax has a 125% headshot bonus and its perk reads that crit hits with throws emit a shockwave that can damage multiple enemies. So if you have a build based around throwing weapons, every time you get a headshot, it will automatically refund your ax, making this thing absolutely shred through groups of enemies. It will almost always one shot kill to the head and if it doesn't you can always just immediately follow up with the finisher move the shockwave damage is also really great at stunning enemies that are nearby and to get this axe just head over to this location on your map and clear out the increased criminal activity area and defeat the boss and trust me you're going to want to get this as soon as possible because it is a ton of fun so moving on to number three it's the raiju smg now one of the reasons i love this weapon so much is that it has multiple firing modes it can three round burst it can shoot in full auto and if you hip fire it you can spam it for even faster bursts but the reason that this weapon is so high on my list is because it's actually my go-to vehicle combat weapon now i don't know if the aim assist is broken for this weapon or what's going on but the raiju will absolutely melt through any enemies that are trying to chase you just look in their general direction and spam fire and they are dead within seconds now i tested out a ton of different weapons in this game to see just what weapons work the best for vehicle combat, and the Raiju was easily one of the best competitors. Now to get the Raiju SMG, just go to this location and you want to complete the increased criminal activity in this area. And at the very end, you'll find a back room and here's where you'll find the weapon. So up next is the runner up on my list, the Deserter Shotgun. Now this shotgun hits hard. And normally I'd rank double barrel shotguns a lot lower on this list since the slow reload speeds. But because of this iconic perk, it would be a crime for me to rank it any lower. Now the iconic perk reads, this shotgun's extreme firepower pulverizes everything in its path, neutralizing an enemy engulfs you in flames, except for when you're low on health, granting a movement speed boost and increased mitigation chance. But what makes this weapon so good is that it actually has a 20% burn chance and that it shoots 15 projectiles. So each one of those 15 projectiles will have a 20% chance to catch an enemy on fire, which pretty much translates to every time you shoot an enemy, they're going to catch on fire. 
So if an enemy doesn't end up dying from just the insane amount of damage that the shotgun does, they will end up slowly just burning away and dying as you're reloading. So this weapon is great to just peek around a corner, shoot an enemy, and then while you're reloading and hiding, they're going to be continuously taking damage. Now this shotgun is probably my favorite in the entire game and you aren't going to want to miss it. Now normally you can get it by completing a side gig, but you can actually just go ahead and skip the gig entirely and just head straight to this location, go to this door and type in the code 1975 and you'll be able to find the deserter shotgun. And now coming in at number one is the super secret, super rare weapon, the Arebus. Now this weapon is easily missable because depending on your choices in the main story, you might not even get this mission to find the blueprint. But if you end up choosing to side with Reed in the main story, then you'll have to eventually go and save Songbird. And in the final area where you're running from the giant killer robot, if you explore around in some of the side rooms, you'll come across a room that has the blueprints for this weapon. Now once you get the blueprints, just continue playing through the mission, beat the main story, and then once you beat the story, afterwards you're going to get a text from a mysterious number wanting you to go and craft the weapon. And once you have this weapon, trust me, you're not going to want to put it down because it is a ton of fun. Now this weapon's perk says rounds fired from this weapon are infused with dark energy from beyond the black wall, highly affecting enemies with low health. But this weapon also has a hidden ability that isn't mentioned, and that's that if you do enough damage to an enemy, it will sometimes apply a quick hack to them, pretty much insta-killing them when it fully uploads. And every enemy you kill with this weapon will pretty much scream with horror until they die. Another cool thing about this weapon is that it does a great job of stun locking an enemy, so if you're in a 1v1 situation, they aren't going to be able to escape and they aren't going to be able to rush you. So overall, this weapon is absolutely insane and a ton of fun. It is a huge pain in the butt to get and it's going to take a lot of time and investment but trust me once you get this weapon you aren't going to want to put it down and it's probably always going to stay in your inventory so that is going to do it for my top 10 brand new iconic weapons found in the phantom liberty expansion let me know which one was your favorite down in the comment section down below and let me know if you have a new favorite iconic weapon that didn't make the list so that is going to do it for me guys if you're new here then please consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting the bell for notifications and i will talk to you all in my next video